So you can see now, so <clears throat> you see how everything's really, really close and really similar at, uh, at what we're talking about. Now, first off, what I want to make sure and do uh, before we get into the actual formula part is I want to, we, we've got a lot of nomenclature again, just as we did in uh, horizontal curves. So now it's time to do all our naming here. So the first thing we have here, you have a BVC. BVC stands for Begin Vertical Curve. Um, or um, a Vertical Point of Curvature. Or the other thing that you'll see me use is PVC, Point of Vertical Curvature. Okay? Up here, at the intersection of your two tangents, where the two grades meet, that's your vertical point of intersection. And uh, you'll see a VPI, but the, you'll also see me write it as PVI, point of vertical intersection. You know, so just rearranging some of the letters there. As you end the vertical curve, when you meet your last tangent again, you have N vertical curve for EVC, or vertical point of tangency, or again, I, I call it PVT, point of vertical tangency. So you'll see any sort of all those. Uh, the ones I've got here, these are the ones that I'll use mostly. In, uh, in, in a lot of the stuff that I do or talk about. But be careful and understand that uh, they can easily be interchanged to whatever else we're talking about. So if you're doing homework or any sort of quiz or other problems and it says something else like that, understand what those all mean and be, uh, just be familiar with it. Okay, as we talked about, you have your tangents coming in, your tangent going out. Well, G1 is always referenced to the grade going into the curve. G2 is the grade reference going out of the curve. And what this represents, it's also it's the percent grade. And what that means is you're going to be using it as, so say grade 1 is 2%. I wrote that wrong. 2%. That's how you're going to be using it in your formulas, as 2. You're using the percent grade. So if G2 over here, then, is minus 1.5%, you're going to use it as minus 1.5. That's your grade, that's your, excuse me, your percent grade. Uh, so if, I, if you're using a formula, you're not going to call this 0.02, you know, like we usually do to make it a decimal form. And you're not going to call this one a minus 0 0.015. Okay, we're using percent grade, which is just this exact number that you find inside there. All right, so x, x is the distance away from the beginning of your vertical curve, the beginning part right here, so your point of vertical curvature. x is just the distance along the grade that you're trying to figure out what elevation it is. Uh, L. L, again, if you remember before, we talked about stationing. And I mentioned that uh, when we're dealing with vertical curves, it's different than horizontal now. Horizontal, you remember, we followed wherever the length of the, along the length of the curve. You know, if you had something like this going along right there in the horizontal plane, or whatever, our length was going all the way along that curve right there. Right? If that was your PC, your PI, and your PT. Well, this one's different now. Um, if you remember, we talked about when we deal with stationing and, and, and everything, that with vertical curves, we're dealing everything in the horizontal, a distance in the horizontal. So you see my length is the distance from Y over to whatever point that you're going to be talking and discussing. Um, so it's from your PVC over to the PVT. That's your overall length of your vertical curve. And then R... Uh, if you see right here, there's a little R inside there. R is the rate of change of grade. And, uh, and we'll discuss that. All that's saying is you can see that uh, um, if you're starting at 2% plus 2%, you're ending at minus 1.5%. You know, here's the tangent coming in. Here's the tangent going out of the vertical curve. It's all the values inside here are changing. It's getting lower and lower and lower every time you move along the vertical curve. Well, that is a constant. That is R. That is the rate of change of grade. So it could be go from plus 2 to plus 1.5 to plus 1 to plus 0.5 to 0. If it's a constant change as it continues to go through there, which allows you to, to end then at your, uh, at your grade, at, the, um, at your vertical point of tangency when you meet the tangent over there. So here, on this slide here, this is just everything that I just told you. You can go back through and label it yourself and practice and just be familiar with all the, all the nomenclature. Last thing I didn't label here was YBVC. That is uh, the same thing. It's YFPVC, elevation at the beginning of the vertical curve. And that you'll see here in just one second. 
it sits right there. Okay, so here's your formula now. You'll see it's really, really close and similar to what uh, the formula for a vertical uh, or for, for a general parabola is. In this instance here, you have again y is the elevation of your beginning of the vertical curve right here. Again, it's that distance from whatever datum you have. See right here? Whatever datum it is you're measuring up from, that is your beginning elevation right there. All right, so uh, next thing we're going to look at then is G1x. And you're going to find that same thing as we talked. So if you have a point here that we're concerned with, okay, G1x, so it's the grade, the percent grade times the distance of x is going to give you then an elevation up to here. So now this is where we're at. Last part is, is r over 2 times x squared. So the rate of change divided by 2 times the distance along that vertical curve squared. And what that does again is this is what we're going to call your kind of correction. Because you're going up the grade and you need to be corrected to pull yourself all the way back down to the point on the curve. So that is now your formula. That's how now we can figure out elevations along this whole curve this is the exact formula you're going to be using to be able to compute and do all that. So again, vertical curves, what is it we're doing? Okay, we're looking for the elevation at some certain point given x, which is uh, a certain station or a certain distance from the point of vertical curvature from your PVC. Now the thing here is, so again, as we get into a little bit of calculus here, if you take the uh, if you take the derivative of the formula, right, what that gives you is the grade at any given point. So if you've got a curve right here, and you and say you're at this point right here, where you take a take the derivative of there, and what do you end up with? Is the slope. Okay, so that when you take the the derivative of of uh, the overall equation to give you um, uh, an elevation at any certain point, what do you get is the grade at any given point along the vertical curve. So that is the slope at any given point whether you're there and here, here, you know, whatever it may be, uh, that's what we're doing. Now the last thing I told you was the rate of change of grade, and it's a constant. Well the last thing you have to do then is you take um, your slope right there, and then you're going to take the derivative of this one to get down to here. So y double prime is equal to r, the rate of change. And r is equal to this right here. Here's what your formula is. It's the grade of your outgoing grade minus your incoming grade divided by 2. And what that gives you is your overall constant rate of grade of change. And that's what you're looking for is you uh, to be able to calculate that because that's, uh, that's key right here. You see right here we can't do anything. We can't make that correction of anything uh, on your vertical curve without knowing what the rate of change of grade is over the entire curve. So again remember that the rate of change of grade is a constant. Uh, you can calculate the uh, slope at any given point, and then given the whole entire formula, now we can calculate the elevation at any given point, at any certain station along that vertical 